Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and due to the feedback that I got on the previous video, this one is also going to be post-Duel sped up commentary, and I'm probably going to continue with that format well into the future, because the uh, response I got from it was very, very, very much overwhelmingly positive. There were a few people that were like, we don't like it, but overall the general consensus was that people like it because it allows me to actually focus on gameplay and make actual better plays, and then be able to articulate thought processes afterward. But basically, what you see me playing here is Blue Eyes Eidolon, or Blue Eyes Invoked, and this is a deck that people have talked to me about, and I've seen people talking about it online for a little bit. It's not something that people have been talking like heavily about, but it's definitely a deck that would caught my eye and seemed very interesting, because the Blue Eyes deck itself is a very slow, slower rather, I shouldn't really use the term slow, because it is kind of quick in terms of how it operates, but it's, it's slower than the field, but it's very methodical at how... It, bas it basically just applies consistent pressure over and over again, turn after turn. And that seems to be complemented really well by the Invoked Engine, as the Invoked Engine also does the same sort of thing when it's standing alone by itself, of just overall just only doing, applying pressure very slowly yet consistently turn after turn after turn um, with cards like Raijin and Makaba and stuff like that. So. Ultimately, I felt like these were a very good fit, and they could actually work together pretty well, so I decided to test it for a video, and I've been testing it in a few different uh, instances as well, off-camera, so I absolutely know how the deck is meant to function uh, before I even jumped into this, but basically, uh, what we're dealing with here is I'm playing against my opponent who is playing Spiral Kaiju. I don't think I saw a zoo card the entirety of the match um, that we ended up playing. Uh, so I think he's just playing literally pure spirals with kaijus, um, and I think that's actually even compounded by the fact that I don't think that I went second any games this match. And I don't even know if going first versus going second is ideal in uh, this deck specifically. I think this deck does have a, a stronger start than regular Blue Eyes decks would, uh, because of the Eidolon, the invoked package. Uh, basically giving you a strong normal summon and being able to go into something like Makaba before you even have to try and dedicate resources into building any sort of other board. But... Ultimately, it's just, it seems, it seems kind of, kind of iffy on whether or not going first or going second is the ideal, uh, blind, rather. But, so, my first turn was pretty underwhelming, as you can see. I just made a Merkaba, uh, just because it just seemed like it was the best thing to do, and I also got Max Seed, but I'm able to Max Seed him back while he's making his push, um, into his stuff. And, I mean, he's opening with good spiral plays, it's just, he's not really able to bait my negation with the Merkaba, like, where he wants it to be negated. <laughs> Um, and stuff like that, so it just ultimately doesn't really allow him to structure his play string very well because he's been spending most of his turn trying to bait my negation, and then when I finally do give him the negate that he was looking for, like, we're already like four or five cards deep off max C, so at that point I only negated because it's like, yeah, I feel like this is probably a good card to negate here, uh, but I also just have so many resources going for me uh, otherwise, and I was almost, I was actually pretty scared, I thought that he was going to, like, try and, uh, like, Naturia Beast me with the Super Agent and the Globe Bulb, uh, but ultimately just, that wouldn't have ended up mattering either way because I drew the alternative and the blue eyes off of that max save. But so being able to start my turn with an invocation to banish the, uh, Alaster that I discarded off of, uh, the Makaba and just get the White Stone out of Grave with the Miracle Fusion effect to get, uh, Makaba on the board just for some negation purposes in case anything like Valor or Maxi shows its head But it also allows me to just recycle the Alaster and then normal summon it get invocation again Which allows me to basically have another free miracle fusion play and so I have the option of saging over the uh, Alaster or wonder wanding it away for draws and I ultimately just decide that the sage option is probably going to be the better route because it puts a body on board and I'm able to banish his field spell uh, just, just, it seemed better in theory and in practice. There's, there's definitely points that could be made on why Wonder Wand would have been better here, but I felt like the play that I made with Dragon Spirit of White by Sage over Elaster was just the better play in general. And I'm able to go Invocation again for another copy of Makaba, and now I can drop my alternative dragon. I'm basically, I have way too many cards to work with because he went into my maxi, and so basically I'm just able to just go for it um, and do anything that I want. And so the drone gives the agent a boost until ever. <laughs> it just stays, uh, but so it doesn't actually end up mattering because of the fact that I'm able to just go into alternative and pop it and then make a uh, make a rank 8 here. And that's ultimately why I tried to put the Dragon Spirit of White on the board, because I wanted to banish his field spell so that I could then target the super agent and get rid of it, and then I'm able to clear his board and just go for a rather clean OTK here with my two Makabas and the uh, the full armor that just popped his uh, Ghost Trick Angel of Mischief, so I'm able to just 
end the game right here and there. And even if I wasn't able to end the game, I do have something like emptiness backing up my board where I have Wonder Wands I can discard and monsters I can discard off the Makaba. Now here, I actually don't realize that he's told me to go first for a few seconds. And I was like, oh, hey, my, my prompts are actually coming up to where I can actually activate cards. So I decide to actually start playing my turn. And I open with a Reckless Magic Circle, so that's pretty good. Allowing me to go into a Laster and having a Wonder Wand play. I've got double trade-in and I've got a target for trade-in, so I'm like, this seems pretty nice. But ultimately, the trade-in targets that I have to get rid of are not really the best. I would have rather gotten rid of things like Blue Eyes or something like that. Um, and conserved the Dragon Spirit of Whites because of the fact that I have to banish one here in order to summon the Makaba. And now, like I said, I don't know if going first or going second is ideal for this deck because, like I said, so far all I've been doing is really going first and it's been working out well. I mean, being able to establish the Makaba and have a form of disruption and then just do blue eyes things the next turn uh, seems like a really strong option to do. And so for here, he Twin Twisters my back row and I'm debating on whether or not I want to negate it. Uh, because I set a Wonder Wand as a bluff. I mean, honestly, it doesn't really matter, but I definitely have double Elaster in hand that I could summon and use with Wonder Wand next turn, so I was debating on whether or not that was going to be something optimal that I should do, is, like, negating the Twin Twister, because that would be a free card anyway uh, to negate because he's had to discard a card. And I've got the Max C, so I feel like I could just get away with interactions like this, but I ultimately decide to just not negate the Twin Twister, because negating the Twin Twister just doesn't seem like it would be overall too worth and negating Spiral Resort doesn't seem like anything I want to be negating either, because it's not a hard once per turn, it can just be used if he has other copies, and so I didn't really want to get rid of my Gospel of Revival, my Return of the Dragon Lords, or my Invocation. I didn't want to get rid of either of those cards, and if you're wondering why I'm saying Invocation, I'm talking about Eidolon Summoning Magic. That card's official TCG name is Invocation, uh, so that's what I'm talking about there. But So, he normal summons his Quick Fix after trying to interrupt a Kaiju Slumber Me, and that one gets the negation. 100%. That one gets it. Uh, but then he goes and summons Quick Fix, searches, and tries to activate Super Agent's effect. Now, this is a weird time to max C, and I actually really didn't like it when I did it, but I felt like it was just better to just do it since I knew he had Big Red because he searched that off Quick Fix, um, is that max Cing there, I don't know what the card on top of my deck is either, and so I'm either going to draw a card off max C, or he could just not resolve his Super Agent and decide to end turn. Either one of those situations I decided was good for me because that still means I still have the Makaba that I have on my board ready to deal with and so he just uses Big Red to bring back Super Agent and then his field spell dies because he has nothing in Grave and he decides to not go into my Maxi any further and so this is just an amazing situation for me. Um, I have no idea why he decided to stop but I make a very questionable play string here and this play string was a really cool play string that would result in like a very very clean OTK with the minimal min most minimal amount of effort. <laughs> But I forgot that Big Red actually has a sacrifice type effect where the monster it's equipped to can't be destroyed by battle. And so, if I had actually taken the time to remember this and realize this, then I would have used alternative to pop the one that was equipped with Big Red and then made a rank 8 of some choice. But I decided to keep the stuff on board and attack with alternative because it's going to clear the monster anyway, right? In theory. Um, and so, it's it, it just ultimately was a, a mistake on my part. Now, he's still going to end with, like, no cards. Uh, but it's the difference of me killing him versus giving him a shot at even trying to play the game. Uh, so at this point, it's it's just not it's not something that I'm proud of. But still, it's it's very much a winning position for me. Now I'm checking my extra deck here to see if I even play a rank four in here, uh, which actually probably might go in because stealing rank uh, stealing level fours with uh, with Cipher Dragon actually seems to come up quite a lot. <laughs> um, so I just use full armor to pop the uh, to pop the super agent and then overlay into Dark Matter to get stuff fueled in the graveyard uh, just because I'm able to. It's a very it's a very simple thing because I don't have that many lights in Grave anyway um, off of like to be able to invocation with and so using the Dark Matter here just allows me to have good lights to invocation with and so then I decide to use invocation and summon another Makaba banishing the Elaster off board and then the White Stone that just got sent to Grave. So now I've got two copies of it and then I've got four monsters in hand, one of them being a Max C that he knew. It was That was the most like kick-in-the-ass thing that I'd ever seen. He revealed a Max C off top of my deck, and I chained Max C to his Super Agent. <laughs> so, I chained Max C to the Super Agent, and then the, the Super Agent revealed Max C to summon itself. <laughs> so I drew a Max C. So he knew I had another Max C in hand. So I don't really agree with how he played his previous turn, but ultimately it just doesn't seem like it was anything that he could have done to change it. But so from here, he just plays Big Red. 
um, and summons his super agent and passes because it can't be killed by battle, but I've got multiple ways to deal with this in the form of being able to Dragon Spirit of White the Big Red away. I'm able to just add back alternative and summon it out of hand and pop the super agent. There's way too many ways I have to deal with this uh, right now. Now that Big Red was a really clutch top deck. I cannot say that it was not a really clutch top deck, but it's just it's not enough to help him clutch the game here. But so banishing my last Light and Grave, the Blue Eyes, and summoning the third Macaba off of Invocation yet again. So I've got triple Macaba. I've got the I've got the I've got the hat trick. I've got the triple sweet. I've got everything in terms of negation, and he's drawing to one card, so he just scoops. And again, he lets me go first this game, so his deck just does not seem to be play playing zoo cards, or else he'd probably be wanting to go first to establish zoo plays, and then do the spiral stuff on top of that. So I'm pretty sure that he's only just playing pure spirals with kaijus, because I have not seen a zoo card this entire match up until this point. I don't think I see them in this game either, at least if I do, it was at a passing glance, like getting discarded off something and never even really done anything with. But my opening hand is pretty, like, not optimal. It's pretty weak uh, in terms of what I have access to because I've only got access to a laser and then um, the Melody of Awakening Dragon to set up my hand for an alternative play. And I just decide that instead of summoning Merkaba, I just would rather summon, like, Dragon Spirit of White out of my deck to, like, try and be an additional body uh, because I've got double copies of Invocation. I've got Maxi again. So, like, it's just, I feel pretty secure in how things go, but, ah, uh, it's just, it's very questionable. I probably should have just valued the Makaba a lot more highly by, like, doing something like using Invocation after I've Melodied to, like, discard the Blue Eyes and then banish the Elaster. That probably was correct, uh, because then I would be able to have Elaster in hand to negate a monster effect. And then I have the, uh, the White Stone of Ancient Engrave to add back the Blue Eyes next turn anyway, so that's arguably more correct. Uh, but I just ended up not doing it because I just felt like leaving my board as it was and just absolutely just maintaining every bit of my resources until the next turn. But so, he goes for a big red play here after getting some searches with the field spell and with quick fix. And so, I max C and I draw soul charge and as you can see my mouse cursor just went absolutely insane over it. Uh, but, ah, uh, he's not going to do anything on my opponent's turn now, is it? And so he decides to activate uh, Assault Mission and he's just trying to clear my board in ways that... Uh, seem very creative um, and also trying to play through the max C so I mean I gotta give him props for that and so he tries to target with tough and he tries to target my uh, dragon spirit of white and I chain its effect to summon the blue eyes from hand because I don't want him getting that draw off of assault mission um, I can't remember if I knew whether or not he had super agent in his hand or not um, for this point I feel like I knew that he had super agent I feel like he searched it off something uh, but again I just I can't remember off the top of my head whether or not he actually had it but so he summons super agent Pops my Reckless Magic Circle, I draw a card off Maxi, and then he draws a card off Assault Mission, and then he machine dupes his Quick Fix. And so at this point, this is the point where the turn starts getting really scary. I am just absolutely, like, just ready to lose, because I feel like there is no way that I can't lose. Um, because, like, I just, I, I see a machine dupe come down, and I'm just like, wait, this is gonna be very bad for me. But so he ends up just cycling through his Quick Fixes, getting searches, Summoning this weird rank 1 thing that lets us both draw a card during my standby phase or both of us gain a thousand. Then he summons another one of them. Um, and I feel like this one, this right here was the mistake which started like making his turn structure fall apart. Is that he should have summoned like something like Embodiment of Crime or Embodiment of Punishment because it's very obvious that he's going for the Utopia Kaiser play here. Um, or he could have summoned something like Ghost Trick Dullhand to like lower my Alistair even further to like try and OTK me over my board. But unfortunately, that just doesn't seem to be the case of what happens. Like, it just... I think his play string was going perfectly until he summoned that second, uh, whatever that rank 1 was. Because he could have summoned a different rank 1, being like Embodiment of Crime, and actually made the Utopia Kaiser a really valuable, like, asset here. And ultimately, it just... It seems like things kind of fell apart for him as his turn... As his turn went forward, because he was doing everything really well. Trying to bait whatever I had, trying to clear things... And then it just seemed like it fell apart a little bit too quickly. So it's a bit unfortunate. But he ends up punching over my Elaster for 4k, and that's pretty neat. And I've got tons of cards in hand. And amongst those cards is triple Dragon uh, dragon Revival uh, thing, Return of the Dragon Lords. And I've got an alternative play and all this sort of stuff. And so I keep reading Utopia Kaiser because I've actually like not read what this card does in a long time. So I end up just like realizing that the last line of effect on that card is that when it has exceeds materials, it can't be destroyed by battle or card effect. 
uh, so I decided not to alternative it, you know. As you saw, my mouse cursor was hovering over it for quite some time. And then using Gospel of Revival, Return of the Dragon Lords, whatever you want to call it, Return of the Dragon Lords multiple times to just bring back stuff, being able to banish uh, his uh, field spell and his assault capture mission thing off of uh, off of my Dragon Spirit of Whites being summoned twice. And then from here, I just decide I'm going to start taking his things. And so I'm pretty sure that I had a different line of play that I could have used to probably ensure that it was game this turn and actually killed him. But I felt like going the safer route and actually just melding my board and uh, and basically just setting up negations and negations and negations was probably the better approach and just making sure that his board was clear and doing so. Because I, I don't know what cards he has in his hand. I don't know if he plays things like Battle Trap, like Hand Traps. I just don't know. I don't have any information on this sort of stuff for like whether or not the Spiral Decks even play these because I've never like really seen or paid attention to Spiral Decks being played. So. I'm just going in blind of like what I should be expecting here, and so I feel like there probably was a way that I could have killed him without actually having to you know, use the Cypher Dragon to lock me into only attacking with it. Um, but ultimately, it it just seems like I'm not really regretting the play string that I made because it just seems like it was like the best thing that I could come up with on the spot. And like I've broken his entire board, I've set up two negations. The Azure Eyes is protecting my board of all my dragons. The only card it's not protecting is Titanic Galaxy and Makaba because Makaba is not a dragon, but I've also got triple Return of the Dragon Lords engraved. So the Titanic Galaxy by all means is protected from any destruction effect. Um, so ultimately it's just it it seems like my play could have probably been better and looking over it again uh, after I do this video, after I finish this uh, this uh, commentary and editing, I probably could have found some way to actually just break his board and kill him. But ultimately, I just in the in the heat of the moment, I went with the play that I made. But so he goes for the terraforming play into his uh, into his field spell, and I suck up the field spell with Titanic Galaxy, and here he kaiju's over my Makaba. And so I'm like, all right, that was a that was a really good sequence of play. Bait one of the negations, and then just kaiju over the next one. Got my ass, and got me good, <laughs> uh, because like I was sitting there with the Titanic Galaxy and the Makaba, feeling snug as a bug because I can just negate a monster effect with the Magaba, and I can negate a spell with Titanic Galaxy, and that seems good. And I negated the field spell specifically because I don't remember a lot of the cards he had access to from his previous turn, and it seems like that field spell, from what I remembered him having access to, was one of the like things that was going to be needed as far as like him establishing a really good board. Uh, but ultimately, it's apparently not the case, and so from here, I actually start panicking because I remember what Spiral Drone's effect is. And Spiral Drone boosts one of his Spiral Monsters by 500 for every card I control. And I currently control 8 of those. And I'm at 4,000 life. <laughs> so Drone can boost a monster by 4,000. So it's just, it's it's something that I'm a little bit uh, a little bit scared about. But unfortunately my opponent doesn't see the game shot in as good of a way. I mean he sets up a great play. He sets up a great play here with... Uh, with what he has access to um, of this stuff, but he could have actually killed me this turn, which is a bit unfortunate. Like he could have left that tough on the board, or just left, um, or just not brought it back with the big red. He could have used drone on super agent, and then big red brought back drone, and then drone would be able to pump on the super agent again, or the tough if it had been left out instead of overlaying with it, and he would have been able to attack twice, or with one just really big beefy super agent, and that just would have been game from there. But from here, I mean, it's not a bad position he's in, in terms of what he's got, like, going on in terms of the play string, because he's got, I mean, and he's got another big red, so, like, the, the quick fix thing here could have actually just pumped again, so, unless I'm just missing something, unless Spiral Gear cannot bring back Drone, but I'm almost positive that it can, um, unless, unless I'm just missing something, uh, but I'm pretty sure Spiral Gear Big Red brings back just Spirals, if I'm, if I'm correct, but anyway... Not something I need to worry about right now. Uh, so he makes embodiment of, uh, of crime or punishment, whichever one. Embodiment of crime. Uh, they're both the exact same effect, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and so what he's doing here is that I actually, I actually really, really incentivize popping this tough because this tough is huge. And so from here, I don't have any more effects to pop cards, and I don't actually recognize what's going on here until main phase two. The embodiment of crime is going to make it to where I can only attack it. And I'm at 300 life, and this is a Gaga Ga Cowboy, and my field is clogged, right? So in theory, this is absolutely not winnable for me in terms of what I have strictly on the board. And I don't see that until until we get to the point where it's it's getting it's getting pretty pretty scary. 
So at this point, it's main phase two, and I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, what do I do? What do I do? I'm gonna lose this cowboy next turn. I realize that I haven't normal summoned yet, and so I decide to tribute summon for blue eyes. Tribute summoning for blue eyes in 2017. Absolutely. And so then I decide to use the ancient white stone just to add back alternative for no real reason other than just to add back cards. And then I detach the blue eyes off of my cipher, take his Gaga -ga cowboy, and then overlay it into my dark matter so that it is no longer a threat. And so I'm like, all right, we can mess with this. And now at this point, I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to lose to any form of, like, effect, like, drone that comes out again. And so I decide to flip over my face down invocation, summon a Makaba, just to make sure that, like, I have at least a format of negation uh, in my uh, in my play string. And so on my board, I've got a negating card. So if he has another Kaiju, then he's going to be able to get me. Uh, but ultimately, that'd be his one card that he drew. So I would be basically fine with that. Uh, but so, from here, I actually don't know what's going on in terms of what's targeting that tough, because I forgot that Drone also has a Grave effect. That card has three effects, low-key. That's actually just really good. Um, and that's that last effect is just one that I never actually take into account. And so, as you can see, I'm just here reading it. It's like, oh, that's where it went from. Because I was just looking at it, I was like, I saw the Drone pop up in terms of the effect activation, and then two cards get banished, and then tough get targeted. I'm like, alright, what's, what's going on here? What's doing this? Uh, but so he adds back tough, um, and then he discards an instant fusion to get quick fix. Quick Fix doesn't have any more targets in deck to search, apparently, uh, so it seemed like a moot point. So basically, at this point, he's just out of resources, and I use the Makaba to negate the tough. Um, and so from here, it's just it's just game over. Uh, the Quick Fix is stuck in attack mode, so I get to attack over it with 35 with the Dark Matter, attack the uh, attack the agent with the Dark Matter because it has two attacks, and then attack for game. So ultimately, it was a very scary game three in terms of what I just had to play against. And I was absolutely 100% of the mindset it, it, multiple times during that game that I was going to lose. Especially after just not really taking advantage of the opening play that I could have uh, that I could have had in terms of uh, in terms of setting up a Merkaba uh, straight away and just waiting. Like I feel like I was very very much in range of being taken advantage of during that game to just absolutely lose. And I feel like I feel like it unfortunately like the stress of playing under Max C. And, uh, and doing all that sort of stuff just got to him. Because I talked to him after this, and I was like, you know you could have, like, chained Drone to the Super Agent pop? And buffed Super Agent, and that would have been enough for game, right? And he was like, yeah, but I didn't I didn't want to, like, risk the Drone getting striked. But there's not strike in my deck list. So, it's a bit unfortunate there that he actually kind of, like, outplayed himself in terms of mentality. He overthought the play string, and it ended up costing him. But that happens in Yu-Gi-Oh! So, I mean, I guess... It's whatever. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links are in the description of my Facebook and my Patreon page if you want to support me directly and get in on a monthly giveaway for a box of Raging Tempest that I'm giving away at the end of this month. Then definitely go check that out if that's something you're interested in. And if you want to support me directly and help me make better things for the channel in the future, then that is definitely a way to do so. But other than that, like I've already said, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what your thoughts are on this format of video and these games and this Blue Eyes deck in the comments down below. I'd be curious as to all of your opinions. I'd be very very accepting of anything you guys have to say in terms of any minor tweaks or anything like that to the deck list because I'm kind of at a standstill with it in terms of uh, as you can see on screen it looks kind of weird uh, so I don't really know what else I want to change for it so if any of you all have any suggestions then definitely leave them in the comments down below but other than that that is it for this video thanks for watching as always thanks for your time as usual and as always guys take care I'll see you in the next video